All right, welcome back guys. In this video, I want to explain a very important topic called callback functions in Node.js. I want to state two examples though, the, uh, which, we, which we can all relate to that will help us in understanding what callback functions are. So the first one is about a package delivery, uh, a story about package delivery. Assume we have a house and we have two roommates X and Y who live in that house and they have a neighbor called Z. Now one day X tells Y, hey Y, I'm expecting a package in a couple of hours which is a gift for our neighbor Z. So once you get the package, can you please bring it over to our neighbors? And then in saying so, X steps out of the house and goes to the neighbor's house. Now there are two scenarios that can happen here. The first one is Y is going to sit at the door and wait for the package to arrive. And when the package arrives, Y is going to bring the package over to the neighbor. Now a second scenario, or the better scenario, would be for Y to go about doing any other work he has until the package arrives. And once the package arrives, he can bring it over to the neighbor Z. Now another great example would be that of a restaurant. So we have a chef and assume that this restaurant has a single server. Now when a customer arrives, the server is going to listen to the request of the customer for their order and then he's going to the chef and say, hey, our customer just ordered a pizza. Can you start preparing it? Now the let's say that the chef takes about five minutes to cook the pizza. Now, once again, we have two scenarios. The first scenario, the server is going to wait for five minutes doing nothing and once the pizza is prepared the server is going to bring it back to our customer after five minutes now in the meantime any customer that arrives would have to wait because our server is not going to wait for another customer until the first customer is uh, catered to now a better scenario would be for when the first customer arrives, the server is going to take his request, go to the chef and say, Chef, we have an order for a pizza. But now, the server is going to say, Hey chef, I'm going to go listen to other customers until the pizza is ready. And once the pizza is ready, call me back. So, I don't have to wait five minutes so that I can I don't have to wait five minutes just to hear the request of another customer. Now how do we relate this to our Node.js code? Now, the chef in the previous slide was like the database and the server still remains the server and the customer is a user that makes a request on the browser. So what usually happens is a customer makes a request to the server. Suppose let's say he makes a request for a database operation. So the server goes to the database and the server is going to wait five minutes for the data to be retrieved. Now in that five minutes, everything else is blocked. So even if a customer two or a customer three comes and makes a request, they are not catered to. They are going to have to wait until the customer one is serviced. Now this is something we don't want in a Node.js. When a customer 1, 2 and 3 all appear at the same time, they must be able to make their request to the server and the server should be able to query the database and when the data is ready, then the server can deliver the data. So irrespective of how many customers arrive, it is going to take the server the exact 5 minutes to, to serve all the customers. So let's see how we can um, show this using our app.js. All right, so let's write some basic lines of code. So console.log, let's say user1 made a request and then console.log, <coughs> excuse me, um, database operation takes five seconds and then console.log 
data deliver to the user. Now let's just go ahead and make copies of these and change user 1 to user 2 and then a user 3. Now go ahead and save it and let's run it node app.js. What happens here is a sequential execution. So user 1 makes a request, to, makes a request. the database operation took 5 seconds and then the data gets delivered to the user. Now the console.log is pretty quick so you don't see the delay between any operation but this is how it's going to happen. User 1 is going to block and then user 2 is going to block and then finally user 3 is going to get serviced. Now this is something we don't want or this is what Node.js doesn't want and the whole purpose of it is to have asynchronous events or callbacks. So what we are going to do is create a function. Let's say function callback and let's say this callback is going to do two things for us. It is going to query okay q u queried the query the database and delivered data in five seconds <coughs> excuse me now we are going to make use instead of the these two console dot lines let's make use of our set timeout function now let's call back our function after five seconds now we don't have a database operation right now so we are going to cheat here and make use of the set timeout function to delay our execution so what set timeout does is after five seconds it's going to call this function called callback so this five seconds can be um, map to our database request. So let's say our database operation takes five seconds and once that five seconds is up I know that the data is going to be ready. So call this function. Now if we replace this again and save it. Now at app.js then wait for five seconds three four five and we have the result. So what's happening here? We have a console.log user one made a request but then we have this function callback so shouldn't this line be executed? Well that's the thing because we are delaying the execution by five seconds or we know that the database operation is going to take five seconds we are telling that continue with execution of the next line of code but when the data is ready call back this function so we are going to have all our requests made at a t made simultaneously without having to block anything and in five seconds we can deliver data to all the three requests so even if we had a hundred requests we would be delivering data in just five seconds so to summarize or to simply put in to put in simple words a callback function is another function that can be passed that is usually passed as an argument to another function and it is usually invoked after some kind of an event and in our case it's going to be 5 seconds so that that's it about callback functions if you guys have any better examples that we can relate to please write it down in the comments I would love to learn from them and uh, anyway thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video